I've been studying snow in watercolor. We recently had perfect snow painting conditions, and so I went out to paint. I'm going to share my sketches, as well as what I've been thinking about as I've been out here working. For me, the difference between a good painting and an outstanding painting is determined by the manner in which the artist puts down the paint. It's not so much what the painting is about, but rather how it was painted. When I'm out on location, I look at the scene and I start by thinking about how I'm going to paint it, even while I'm still deciding what exactly to put into my scene. How can I put the paint down to render the image faithfully, yet capture what I feel about the scene? I often start with a black and white study, which lets me see ahead to how the painting will look, and that is when I practice my brushwork. Then I assess my sketch and make any changes before I move on to a color version. This time, the color version did not live up to my plans. I had strayed too far from the simplicity of my value study and I overworked the painting. That can happen quite easily in watercolor, and it takes discipline and planning to make sure it doesn't happen. The next time I went out, I decided rather than to make a painting, I would simply paint a series of studies of the parts of the scene that caught my attention. In this case, a tree with snow piled on its branches. I started with one branch. I paid attention to color and brush strokes, trying to portray the white snow against the green as faithfully as I could. I didn't worry about composition or storytelling. I was simply working on how best to get the paint down. I made two studies. The left-hand one was first, and I took what I learned from that one and painted the right-hand study. I strengthened the color and showed a few more branches. Then I turned to study another part of the scene that had caught my eye, the cool blue light on snowy branches with warm light on background trees. I liked how this study turned out. It's very simple and cleanly executed. Finally, there was time for one more study, of the tree trunk and the shaded snow before it. This study grew as I worked on it. It went from being just a small sketch of the tree and some snow, to including the brook as well. This also gave me a larger snow area to practice on. Here's a closer look at it. I was pleased with what I accomplished with both of these studies, but I don't consider either of them to be finished paintings. I painted them to practice, and I learned a lot from each of them. The next day, I went out and I followed the same procedure. I started with a couple of small studies of the light on the brush and the snow in a marsh. It's not so much what I paint, but how I paint it, right? The first study was a good start, but it did not show the brilliance of the light reflecting from the ice, so I did a second study. You can see that one is unfinished because it accomplished what I needed. It showed me how to paint that light, and that's all I needed it to do, so I stopped. When I arrived on scene, I'd initially thought I'd like to paint a wide view of the marsh, but after painting my study, I decided that trying to cram all that scene onto the size paper that I had with me would make a tight, laborious painting. As I worked on my studies, I'd realized what it was I wanted to say about this spot and how to show it. I wanted to show the warm light reflecting off the ice and glowing through the reddish shrubs and golden dry marsh grass. The, vi the vibration of the bright warm colors against the cool blue shadows on the drifts was visually exciting and I was painting this to share that excitement. In arranging this painting, I stuck close to my initial studies, but I added some brush in the foreground to be silhouetted against the bright light. I'm sharing all this to illustrate some of the differences between an artist's study and a completed painting. Studies are made with the intention to learn, to discover. When I paint a study, I'm working to figure out how to paint better. Making a study is a technical process. A study can still end up being beautiful, but its initial purpose is always for me to learn something. On the other hand, I want my paintings to communicate something specific to the viewer. Sometimes the message can be really simple, as it is in this case. Winter is beautiful. Can you see all the colors out here? Isn't it great to be outside? Other times, the message can be a lot more complex. But either way, a successful painting needs planning and forethought to get its message across to the viewer. 
I've explored here some of those painting steps in hopes that it will give you a bit of an understanding what it means to be a working artist. Thank you for following, following along on these painting excursions. I hope you enjoyed hearing what I think about as I paint. I welcome your comments below. You can see these studies and more on my website, as well as sign up to get weekly updates on where I've been painting lately and where I'm going next.